Okay, this video is called How I Cook and Adventures with Rumpelstiltskin. So Rumpelstiltskin was this sort of dwarf midget guy who was kind of a mean guy, but he also did some nice things. There was a lady, the daughter of a miller, and the miller, her father, was bragging about his daughter. And he told the king and everyone that she could spin hay into gold. And so the king said, okay, well then bring her into my uh, palace and I'll put her in the basement and I'll earn the barn and let's have her spin the hay into gold. And of course the lady, his daughter, the miller's daughter, didn't know how to do that. So she was crying and crying because the king said if she doesn't spin the hay into gold, he's going to execute her. So she cried and cried, figured it was the last night of her life. And then um, this man appeared here, Rumpelstiltskin, and um, he offered to uh, spin the hand to gold. And she had to give him her necklace for it the first time. The second time she had to give him, you know, her ring. And then the third time she said, I'm sorry, but I have nothing left to give you. And he said, well, you give me your firstborn child and I'll do it. And, you know, the daughter had to agree with him because she had nothing else to offer and the king would otherwise execute her. So, by the way, she tried to watch the, um, the little man as he spun the hand to gold because she wanted to learn how to do it. I mean, she knew that would be a valuable skill. And he was very nasty to her. He said, get out of here. And he just yelled at her. And so he actually, you know, other than spinning the hand to gold, he was rather nasty to the young lady. But he did spin the hand to gold. And then um, he was when she, she did get married and she had a child, you know, the, the little man came back to claim the child as his. And... He did give her a chance, though. He said, if you can guess my name, okay? And then, you know, one of the days, one of her messenger friends was sort of spying on the uh, little man, and he was dancing around the fire and singing to himself, there's no way she'll ever win the game, for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. But anyways, be that as it may, that's who Rumpelstiltskin is. Anyways, as far as cooking, I usually cook the old-fashioned way. I have women do it. Uh, my muses don't help me that much with writing, but they make a good dinner, and then you'll say, oh, isn't that sexist? That's sexist. No, that's exactly what they want. They don't want me in the kitchen. That's what my mother wanted, my grandmother, well, my grandmother is really my mother-in-law, and that's what my wife wants. So contrary to popular legend, women are not that nice a lot of times, okay? There's no Florence Nightingale in the kitchen, all right? You can't avoid the split tails in the kitchen. They're like territorial animals that main control that maintain control of the kitchen by yelling at anybody who goes near the sink. They say stuff like, move, I need to peel potatoes, you're wasting water, you just splashed the window, now clean it up. I'm sick and tired of cleaning up after you. Turn off that light, you're wasting electricity. And I would say something like, well, I thought you want more light for peeling potatoes. They say, get out of here. And then I would say something like, you know, you shouldn't use a metal spoon in the cooking pot. If you scratch it, that puts aluminum into the food. Grandma, mother-in-law says, get out of here. You say one more thing, I'm leaving. You cook for yourself. And it's the same in the laundry room. No matter how I set the controls on the washing machine and the dryer, it's always wrong. I'm ruining the clothes. I'm going to break the machine. And it's not just my wife and my mother-in-law. Even my mother was like that. For example, you know, if I brush my teeth in the kitchen sink, she would yell at me and said, if I ever do that again, she's going to kill me. Uh, they, women overreact to everything in the kitchen has been my experience. And they leave half-eaten bananas around, stuff like that. So anyways, never in my life has a guy behave that way. I've never had a guy from my brothers, my father, my teammates, my fraternity brothers, my other roommates I've had, they never yelled at me for that sort of stuff. And what I think is happening is that, you know, like the wife and the mother-in-law, they try to control me by establishing a baseline of bitching that's only going to be decreased if I give in to their demands. And in the end, the women almost always win the kitchen arguments because they stick together and I don't have the energy to argue with them. And I said that my grandma, my mother-in-law, is like Rumpelstiltskin. You can't go in the kitchen when she's in there, you just get yelled at. But if you leave her alone, you know, she cleans up the place and she makes great food. She's a great cook. So she spins a hand of gold. Anyways, you know, I was having a little tightness in my chest the other day. And so I went to the cardiologist and uh, he told me I needed a stress test. So he brought me into a room that was like a combination kitchen and laundry room. Then he brought in my wife and my mother-in-law and he told me I had to obey all their rules for one hour. It was very stressful. <laughs>